Welcome, ladies and gents. Chris Andre here. You can find me at Bet Boxing on Twitter for boxing related tweets, or you can subscribe to this channel, Chris Andre Boxing, here on YouTube and get notifications whenever a new video is uploaded. Um, first and foremost, I want to wish you all a very, very Merry Christmas. I hope it's a wonderful day for you and your loved ones. Uh, even if you don't celebrate this particular day, remember what the message is about. It's one of forgiveness. It's one of loving your fellow man, caring about humanity. It's about repenting and self-reflection and trying to be a better person. And I hope we can all be better people and have a better world going into the next year. Um, I know there's an awful lot of fear at the moment for a lot of people. Um, I want to put up a little tweet, a thread, a Twitter thread in the description box of this video which deals with some official data with regards to nothing to do with what's going on in general, but more like the data of something potentially happening to people if you meet during this time. I know there's a lot of you know areas where you're allowed to meet and there are still people that are afraid, even if they don't have any symptoms, to meet family. So this is all official government data, just so you know the actual risk, how minuscule it is, check it out. If this is just put out there just to calm you guys. I know there's a lot of fear at the moment. So please check out that that um, thread and, you know, have your minds at rest. Now let's talk boxing. It's going to be a bit more of a, a fun video, something that uh, I want to sort of discuss with people. It's to do with fantasy matchups, who you would like to see fight in 2021. But I don't want to necessarily just hear big fights. Obviously, we all want to see Fury AJ, right? We all want to see Errol Spence and Terence Crawford get it on. We would love to see a third Canelo Golovkin fight or, you know, Baturbi Evan Bivol. But what I really want to know are the sorts of fights that are out of left field, okay? Fights that you wouldn't necessarily hear being spoken about, but that you think could be real barn burners or really interesting and intriguing matchups. So I'll start with one. I would love to see Chris Eubank Jr. fight David Lemieux. They're not obviously, I mean, obviously they've both been, at, they've operated at high level, but they're not superstars and people aren't sitting there clamoring for this sort of fight. But the reason I find this fight fascinating is because Chris Eubank is superb at maintaining a high tempo, getting on the inside. And when he's on the inside of the pocket, he's very, very good at rotating his, his upper body to create leverage and space to shoot in uppercuts and hooks. And we know that David Lemieux likes to launch himself into shots. So when someone invades his personal space and pushes him back, he becomes significantly less effective. But getting close enough to David Lemieux to be able to put him in that position when you don't necessarily have a top-class jab, because the guys that have dominated Lemieux are Golovkin and Billy Joe Saunders in recent years. Forget his earlier years where he got stopped, where he'd yet to really develop as a fighter. In his more recent years, they're guys with terrific jabs. Eubank isn't a jabber. So for Eubank to get into the pocket, to be able to force him back, he'd have to come through hellfire. Now, we know how durable Eubank is. He's got a terrific chin. One time against George Groves, who's a big puncher at super middleweight, make no mistake, nearly dropped him early in that fight. He landed a straight right hand, and Eubank literally almost went down like a sack of potatoes. Went down, but kept his feet, maintained his... his he stayed on his feet, almost like a weightlifter that had sunk a bit too deep in a, in a lift... Um, and he found his way back to his feet and then he wasn't, you know, he wasn't seriously hurt again. There was an uppercut late on in the fight. He was hurt, but not, he never looked like he was going down. So with a big puncher like David Lemieux and the durability of Eubank, as well as the tempo that Eubank can set and getting on the inside and pushing Lemieux back where he becomes significantly less effective, to me, it becomes a really fascinating matchup. So that's one example of a fight I would love to see. Um, let me know what other fights that you guys would love to see that are may perhaps a bit out of left field. Fights that nobody's really talking about. It might not really be involving the top guys. It might do. It might also involve top guys that no one's talking about. You know, perhaps a, a catchweight fight that you might think, oh, although I hate catchweights, but for example, it could be a catchweight fight or one guy moving up a division. And, you know, let me know basically what sort of fights you would love to see. I'm going to give you another one from heavyweight. And that fight would be um, Tony Yoka against Joseph Parker two guys with good amateur pedigree Yoka obviously with a better amateur pedigree but they've both got very fast hands Parker's hands are faster in terms of combinations um, Yoka though seems to be a guy that 
although he's lacking experience, a lot of people are talking about him as, you know, potentially the future king of the division. And Joseph Parker's the sort of fighter who I think is an unbelievable talent. But I don't like to question the heart of a fighter because, listen, to get to a world-class level, you have to have heart. To step in the ring at all, you have to have some level of heart. But everything's relative, okay? I'm not comparing him in terms of heart to the average Joe. But compared to elite heavyweights and their heart, compared to the heart of a guy like a, a, a Pavetkin or a... Or a a, a white, a Dillian White, for instance, guys that will go down, get up off the canvas, look to go to war, constantly hanging in there. He's not really there for me in terms of heart. And he doesn't have that killer instinct. He hurt White badly, Joseph Parker, in their fight. It, and White was hanging on for dear life. And I didn't see any urgency. I'm sure he was tired, but he knew he was losing that fight. And I didn't see any urgency from Joseph Parker to release himself from the hold of White to try and throw as many punches as he could, even if they're just touching punches. White could barely stand up. Just the activity of moving your arms might have led to the referee stepping in. So that would be another fight I would find to be extremely interesting. To see those two guys um, try and outbox each other, essentially. How would each one react if they got into a position where they were struggling a bit? Would we see that heart? One more. I'll give you one more. Just to give you ideas now, because I'm, I'm thinking out of left field. Fights out of left field. Oscar Rivas against Derek Chisora. Oscar Rivas, a little tank, really compact, low center of gravity, big puncher, great chin. Derek Chisora only knows how to come forward. Okay. That would be a bigger, physically stronger man in Chisora who's clubbing and only comes forward, but he'd be walking into a lot of shots against the guy who is a pocket rocket for heavyweight and produces an awful lot of power. They would both be coming forward, in my opinion. It would cause an absolute war, a barn burner. Let me know what out of field, left field fights that you'd love to be see made, and why. What about their styles makes them mesh? Have a lovely Merry Christmas, everybody. I look forward to hearing everybody's opinions on this. Take care, and God bless.